when that stops blinking. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, councillors, staff, and members of the public. Many of you will be watching, I am sure. So we'll get into the evening session of presentations of the long-term plan. And the first one up today, we have James Wright and the Montalto Water Scheme. The floor is all yours. Oh, thank you. Um, good evening. Um, I'm, as you said, uh, um, one of the farmers in the Montalto area who, um, who uses the water in the Montalto Water Scheme. Um, and I uh, am on the committee that um, of all the farmers that liaise with the council a little bit um, over its sort of activities. Um, we're very concerned um, at the new ratings proposal um, that uh, and the budgets for the next 10 years um, to do with the installation of the um, membrane water treatment plant um, at the top of the scheme. Um, the expense of it is, is, is very high um, and um, just to give an example, um, we farm about 340 hectares on the, um, on the scheme, so we're rated on about 340 hectares and we pay three uh, annual charges um, for housing on those, you know, on each, we get three different titles. Um, and so our rates for the water currently are 14,770 odd dollars. Um, in year nine of the, of the proposed budget, that will go up to 51,900 just for the water um, and obviously that's that's a massive cost um, and uh, the reason that the membrane treatment plant has to go in uh, I understand is uh, is because um, the houses that are connected to the scheme require drinking water standard water um, and uh, there's a lot of water that goes through that scheme is actually going to livestock and uh, to spend all the money treating the water for livestock is going to be uh, a lot of money unnecessarily wasted. Um, one of the problems that we see uh, with putting the membrane treatment plant at the top of the scheme is that the existing pipe work in the scheme um, is a fair age, a fair chunk of it, and um, quite a lot of cracks in it, and water troughs and things that are connected to it are uh, often don't have one-way valves in them, so there's a potential for suck back, and the cracks in the pipe, of course, have the potential to venturi dirty water and mud and stuff into the pipeline and contaminate the water within the pipe. So um, our view is that uh, you're not likely to get treated water quality at the houses, even though you're treated at the top end. So um, ARA, we would suggest that it might be a waste of money um, and it won't achieve the goals you're planning to achieve. Um, um, suggestion uh, that we might have, well, would be to treat every house on the scheme with a, or put install a treatment plant at every house um, and uh, an ultraviolet treatment scheme um, with pre filters and um, potentially, I think I spoke to a um, water force and they said you'd need to have a tank. Water goes to the tank through the pre-filter, the ultraviolet filter, and into the house. And and the council perhaps could certify these things uh, in order to um, meet their obligations for freshwater standards. Um, and uh, the the chap at Water Force that I spoke to said you could probably install one of those for about six thousand uh, dollars per household. Some of the houses are close together and you might be able to put one in and do two or three houses. Um, you know, you've got some of the dairy farms in the area have got, um, you know, staff houses sort of within 100 metres or two of each other and they might, um, you know, be able to be treated with one, maybe, maybe make some savings there. But but um, that would be, I think this, this, well, there were 90 houses, I think, on the scheme about 2013 and I know there's going to be more, so potentially there's 100 houses or so, but I mean, you guys will know more than I do about that. Um, you'll know what's uh, what the deal is on that, and uh, and that would at six thousand each, it would only be six hundred thousand compared with three and a half million, and it'd potentially be more effective. That'd be my or our, our thoughts about that. Um, 
um, just as a matter of note, some of the irrigation schemes, the water is a lot cheaper than what we'd have to pay for our water. Um, there's the other suggestion that the council have made about uh, having a collective uh, scheme where they treat all the water and then shift it across to the various schemes uh, within the county, uh, um, you know, all treated in the one place. And my view about that would be that it would be um, very expensive. Um, and again, where would you feed the water into the scheme? If you put it in at the top, then you're going to face all the same issues that we've got at the moment and that it would get contaminated before it reached the houses. Uh, the only other alternative is to put a whole new pipe scheme to all the houses, um, and that does seem like it would be pretty expensive. Um, um, as far as the scheme goes, um, there's been maintenance done uh, and new pipe installed, but there's still a fair bit of um, poor grade pipe, you know, that's just got old and it's, it's not buried very deeply. And um, people are catching it with their implements when they cultivate and that sort of thing. And um, and money that would be spent on the scheme might be better invested in um, putting some of the pipes deeper or, and some new pipes. Um, the new pipe that has been installed has been very successful. And um, perhaps some more of that might be a better way to use the money. Um, or, you know, maybe if we increase rating to pay for that rather than increase rating for, for this water quality stuff. I understand that the council are over a barrel and that it's the government that are pushing the pushing <coughs> the water quality standards and and uh, I, you know I, I can see what you're up against um, and I just want to make sure that you understand that we feel a little bit yeah. uh, backed into a corner um, and there are a number of farmers within the district who uh, have alternative supplies of water that they could tap into potentially um, put their own scheme in and leave a scheme some of them have got irrigation water which they could uh, treat and use at their houses uh, and they use the irrigation water for the um, livestock anyway um, and so they could leave the scheme and that would therefore make the rating base smaller and the cost even higher. Um, so yeah that's about all I've really got to say. But uh, Thank you uh, James. Uh, councillors, <coughs> councillors have had any questions? Councillor Lovett? I'm just going to say that we have put a scheme in to treat water at one house and it's cost us six thousand dollars in in the tank um do you envisualize the council kind of owning that because i know we're changing filters on that probably once a year or six months um do you think the council should own it and perhaps maintain them or we think the if, if we went down that line or would the, if the people look after it themselves oh. <coughs> depends on the council's uh, view to their liability, I suppose. Uh, if they feel that they're going to be held liable for the quality of the water all the time, and I think they are, um, and I think it's becoming the rule that anybody that supplies water to anybody other than themselves is liable for the quality of the water. So I think you're going to have to um, have the council being responsible for certifying the water filters. Uh, and I understand dairy farmers do it in their, in their washdown plants. They have a certified water filter in their sheds and, um, and, the water, and it gets certified by Fonterra or whoever. And, uh, and then uh, they can use that to wash out all the gear that has the milk going through it. So, uh, something similar to that might be a good option for yeah. houses. Thank you, James. Uh, any other questions? Oh, Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Mr Chairman. <coughs> Good evening, James. What's the supply like that you've got? Is it from a spring or is it... Um, what's the quality like and how much have you actually got where, at your source? Uh, well, the, the supply comes from uh, uh, the Upper Hines River um, out of the hills. There's a couple of creeks um, supply uh, um, uh, intakes uh, in two branches of the sort of upper, upper headwaters of the south branch of the Hines. Um, and it's pretty reliable. Um, there's a resource consent for a, a certain amount, and I can't tell you exactly what it is because I haven't got the figures with me, but uh, th it is consented to supply a certain amount of water. Um, and it seems to be enough, uh, particularly given the fact that there are a number of farms that are not using it for stock water any longer, but still paying rates. Um, there seems to be enough water as long as we keep on top of the leaks uh, to supply everybody adequately. Uh, there hasn't been a failure in the scheme that I know of. Um, 
So the water supply, water supply is all right. However, to feed uh, dairy cattle uh, adequate water, it's probably not. So, uh, thank you, James. No other questions from the councillors. Well, thank you very much for coming in and making your presentation. That's right. We will deliberate on that and we'll get back to you in due course. Thank you. Next uh, submitter to this evening is Ross Bomar and his submission can be found on page 496. And I know Councillor Lovett is uh, leaving the meeting. The right. floor is yours, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, my name is Ross and uh, I farm in the Rakaia Gorge, so high country farming up there with the uh, Merino sheep and Angus uh, cattle. So I've got 1,935 hectares and my wife and I moved back there oh, a bit over a year ago to take over the, um, the reins of the farm. <coughs> the, uh, it's been in her family for over 100 years and uh, we did it mostly for our uh, kids and you know because it's quite nice out there too, we quite enjoyed ourselves and uh, yeah, been actively kind of getting involved and learning what we need to improve in the uh, small community we have up there. There's only... Uh, Eight families, you know, on our side of the uh, the road. Basically, once you get up to um, Double Hill Run Road, so uh, yeah, it is a small number of us, but we uh, still need to be heard and still need certain things done, and reliant on uh, you guys at times to uh, try and push forward. You now is what we need done for us. So most of my uh, submission here is really about uh, we've got a uh, the road. And it was very good of Liz to um, come up and uh, see it as well and meet us and then for you Liz to say come on down and uh, talk to everyone here about our uh, road up there. You know, uh, many of you have probably been up there before and it is very, uh, you know, very scenic. Uh, the challenge uh, is also the fact that it's prone to washing out and uh, it's prone in terms of when you live up there getting lots of potholes in it and uh, being to the point where uh, it's almost impassable. I can tell you after um, we had our second baby there about three months ago and I had to take my wife home after having a caesarean, I've never been sworn at so much for uh, <laughs> apparently hitting all these potholes on purpose. And as I pointed out, I said there's nothing I can do about it. You know, they're everywhere. So. Um, yeah, so we've got an opportunity, you know, to effectively improve the the road, and we've been working, you know, with some of the guys here in the, in the council and your roading department are, are supportive of it. And uh, yeah, I guess where we get to the challenging bit is, you know, um, they're a little bit hesitant when it comes to dealing with you know, ECAN, yeah, you know, because no one seems to be able to get answers out of them. And effectively, what we really need to do is just kind of keep kind of pushing. So they may need some assistance in how they push, you know, through any barriers that they bring up, as well. Um, it was about 5.2 kilometres of road, you know, that you can have realigned, and you can have it realigned for free, as well. Now that's an unprecedented option for a, a council when someone's actually going to fix your road, you know, for free. Yeah, you know, the only thing you've got to do is push through ECAN and push through all the regulations. Your planning department, you know, can see all the benefits of it. You know, it's great for the, um, the school bus. It cuts times off our transit times. You know, it makes it a whole lot safer. You know, I brought along some bits of supporting paper here, which I'll hand round so you can all take it home and, uh, and read it. But, you know, we've only got one road in and one road out. And that's what makes it quite unique. Yeah, so we do need to have these alternative, you know, routes because if there is a washout, you know, it could be the difference between, you know, potentially even life and death having these alternative, you know, tracks that are pushed through. <coughs> so it is very, you know, significant uh, to us. And um, the other thing it allows us to do is it allows us to push the weed control lines around. You know, we use the road as basically a barrier to help control the weeds, you know, because it's a natural barrier. Yeah, you know, so if we can push it further towards the river, it'll help with that. Uh, it'll lower your maintenance cost and your ongoing costs for the council, you know, significantly, because uh, Harmer is the contractor, you know, prepared to continue to, you know, maintain it, you know, because it works well for them, because effectively uh, it uh, cuts down their costs on their fleet as well, because there's a quarry just past us, so there's a lot of trucks on this section of road. Um, yeah, it moves it away from the um, environmentally from the Dwarf Kauai you know, Reserve, so it's a good environmental project. Moves it away from the seepage that comes out of the hill, 
so the water is further underground. Um, yeah, and the biggest thing of all, and if we really don't need any other you know, um, points, is it makes it a whole lot safer. You know, it cuts out the blind corners. So, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know what you guys can do at all or how you can help push it through, but, yeah, you guys in the planning department and roading wanted me to come along here as well, as your councillors, and uh, if we can get something done, I know the eight families up there would be very appreciative. So... So well, thanks. Thank you for bringing that uh, to us, Ross. And um, we got some questions from Councillor McMillan. Thank you, <coughs> and thanks, Ross, for coming down tonight. Um, just a question: Did you make a submission to ECAN on this as well? No, I didn't submit to this on ECAN. I submitted to ECAN on a whole lot of other issues okay. that uh, most farmers have. <laughs> surprise, surprise! So, yeah, no, yeah. Um, and supplementary. Yeah. So. <coughs> what is the biggest hold up with ECAN? Because I know when Councillor Wilson and I came up to your meeting, um, the roading team were very supportive of of the, the new road, um, but it all sort of depended on, on ECAN. So what, what's so really holding that up? The, the latest, well, effectively, it's very difficult to get answers out of anyone uh, there. The, uh, the latest is that uh, your roading department is going to put in an application to your planning team, effectively saying that they don't really need to do anything because it's already covered off all the bases, it doesn't impact the uh, district plan at all. And the planning department is sort of at the point where they're just going to tell you can, well, unless you can give us some answers, we're just going to probably soldier on here you know, and get this done because we're talking this road being in in the space of two to three days. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ross, I'm sitting here listening, and I wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about, <laughs> to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah. All I've got, you, there's two councils been there, but I must have missed something. So what exactly, exactly are you going to do? Did I miss something, or everyone else knows it? Mm. I can't see anything else. There's nothing here. So you want to know exactly what they're going to do? So they're going to move the road yeah, from where it's currently situated into a different location so that it's yeah. safer. Yeah. So I must have photos, but I can't find them under your name, so that's fine. I will sort it. Yeah. In, anything further, Councillor Ram? Uh, Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Ross. Yes, I was fortunate enough to go up with Liz. Instead of a windy road, you've got a nice straight piece. I thought there was something about a lizard or a bird, or a, is that what's ECAN holding you up because of they could be a wetland, or is there some sort of ulterior motive that ECAN have got? Well, that's a great question. Yeah, that's something that we'd like answered ourselves. You know, um, yeah, um, if we can get it in black and white, then we can actually solve it and you know, move forward. You know, there's always um, questions about lizards and there's always questions about wetlands, but you know, the one review that's been done by a person from uh, ECAN you know, didn't really shed a whole lot of light, and that's what your planning department's been trying to get some more clarity around. Well, what do you actually want here? So, <clears throat> so supplementary, you think, I oh, hope, that if our planning department says shift it, that'll be it. Yeah, well, they just need to keep, you know, pushing, really, you know, to try and get some concrete uh, answers because at the end of the day, you know, community safety's <coughs> got to be more important than these lizards and a few of them in Madagari bushes. So. Mayor Brown? Yeah, uh, thanks, Ross. <coughs> I was up there about a year ago with John Harmer and looked at it and couldn't make the meeting that you had with these two, but uh, know the road, know what you want to do. I thought the problem was... Um, around dust coming off that was going to affect some creature up there or critter um, and common sense doesn't really prevail because the dust was coming off the other road which wasn't a problem yet if you moved the road the dust would come off this one which was a problem which doesn't make sense I, and understand the frustration we we share that as well but the main question is would this be the main road that and the other one would be shut down or would this be still an alternative road yeah, so the intention is just to be an alternative you know, road at this stage, but in all reality, you know, everyone's going to use the straight one, so all the maintenance cost is going to go on to the, the new road. 
Yeah, because there is other costs involved if you had to try and shift the title and everything. Yeah, so the intention was to just leave the existing road, you know, where it is, but of course, yeah, you, know, right. you won't need to do anything to it. So, I um. understand. Mm. Thank you, uh, Councillor Falloon. Thank you, Mr Chair. And then I may have to terminate the question. So the issue is, because the road is actually being moved onto ground that hasn't had a road before, ECAN are looking for a full bloody um, nature study on what bloody critters are there that, or plants are there that might interfere with some bloody piece of useless policy. Is that, do I read it right? Well, yeah, one would assume something like that, but then again, you know, it's actually getting an answer to get to that point. You know, if there is lizards, you know, it's quite common for them to be rehomed. So let's just determine how we just rehome these things, you know, to, or catch them or whatever we need to do. Yeah, and if there is some plants that need to be planted wherever else, well, let's just determine that we need to plant 10 plants elsewhere and move on. But, yeah, we need to put the people first, so... Thank you, Ross. Last very quick question from Councillor Mackay. Oh, <coughs> thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Ross, um, do you have any idea of how many other people use the road beside the families and the service trucks to those families? Are, are there tourists that ever go up and down? Yeah, there's more and more all the time going up and down the, the road. Um, just recreational users. You know, we have a lot of people like this last week, a lot of artists going out there to paint pictures. You know, and a lot of sort of people go up and then try and go through and out the aspirate and you know, gorge. So, yeah, there is a lot more people than the regular users. But don't ask me exactly how many. Okay. You, know, you guys might have a better idea than me. So, right. mm. so Thank you. one could say that it would be of benefit to the wider community as well if this road was done. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, look, thank you, uh, Ross. Thank you very much for coming in on the evening and, and presenting that to us. As we say to all the presenters, we will give it due deliberation and we'll get back to you. So thank Perfect. you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Our next uh, person up is Paul Dixie and speaking on behalf of a good number of others and his submission is on page 160 and 163. Paul, the floor is yours. Thanks, Roger. Um, firstly, thanks for the opportunity to, to come and hear our views. Um, as you rightly said, it's, it's on behalf of 65 or so ratepayers. In actual fact, the number's probably grown a bit more since, since we put it in. Um, the feeling still is that 14.88% proposed increase is still too high. Um, we understand the Council's position that the, it's inevitable there will be some rate increase, but we feel it should be more in line with other districts or other towns that the Council rate. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I, it was about three pages long and, and we're trying to keep it brief. I think you guys have had a pretty big day, so I feel sorry if you're in that, that vein. Um, basically, Methvin feel as though we're still only getting the necessities or well, Ashburton are spending the big money down here on projects that we see as glorified empire building. Um, especially since in light of we've waited for a decent drinking water system for years and years and years, and it seems to be put off, put off. Eventually it's being done apparently in this next long-term plan, but it still doesn't alter the fact that Methven people see a lot of money spent in Ashburton over and above basic infrastructure that we, we require. Um, I did ask the question at the ADC meeting why new builds were going to be lumbered with a $2,000 rise for, for community infrastructure and I did get a quite a long-winded um, reply back from someone in the staff um, and it basically was to fund Ashburton infrastructure being the art centre, civic centre, EA networks and what have you. Um, that's fine, but we don't see why the hall's been pointed out as being a reason for the rate increase in our pool when those facilities are still available to Ashburton people. In fact, the hall, Mount Hutt Hall is used quite a bit by Ashburton folk for weddings and, and events. So why are we being double whammied for Ashburton amenities and methane amenities? 
where Ashburton people seem to be only paying for their Ashburton amenities. So that's one thing. Um, the hall, we, we see this targeted rating for the hall, but all we see there is a, a tax collected from our ratepayers, and then it's handed back to the hall and called a grant or whatever. So eventually people are paying their own way for the hall anyway. There may be a little bit of subsidy from the council, but n not a great deal. Um, so basically I think it comes down to the fact that, that we seem to, in Methven, struggle all the time to get the basics when all the money's being spent down here. And that's why we can't see why a 14.88% rate increase is justified. Thank you, uh, Paul. Um, any questions from the councillors? Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Mr <coughs> Chairman. Yes, I attended the meeting up there and I've heard your point of view. My question is, do Methven want to join the wastewater scheme so that they're a part of the whole group, so if they have a major infrastructure they get subsidised, or do you want to stay on your own completely? You won't get an <coughs> increase, but if you have a major spend, which you will get in the future for wastewater, you will be, the Methven town itself will be required to spend that money because the government will say that up to a certain standard, that's it. Mm. So you have to, what, where's your stand? Do you want to join the group and possibly, or you will be subsidised, or do you want to stay on your own? You'll pay a lot less at the moment, but in the future you're going to be really lumbered. Mm. Yeah, I look, I understand that, and I, and I assume they do want to join the wastewater scheme. But according to the to the email I got, it's virtually paid or half paid off, um, and that came from an email from a staff member here when I asked the question. And and it doesn't change the fact that okay, we can go away from the wastewater and find that the deck chairs are being moved. The wastewater for new build infrastructure has gone down but the community infrastructure for the buildings down here has gone up. So I, I cannot see, all it's done is, is switch the, the figures around. A supplementary? Yes. As a representative of the Eastern Ward, the Heinz Community Centre, the Heinz Township, their infrastructure charge has gone up too. Mm. Because the council, we say that everybody in this district has got the access to the Ashburton Library. You've got a small library up there, mm. pool. You've got a small pool, but mm. it's every, somebody at local for Ruapuna or Montalto. Everybody we consider part of the infrastructure. So, do you not think it's fair that um, Methven has to be part of that? Well, Otherwise, as long as they're a part of ours, yeah, I do. But it's got to be a two-way street. I mean, our, our facilities are used by Ashburton people too. The Mount Hart Hall, I can tell you, is used a lot by Ashburton people. But we're paying for both. We're paying for here and we're paying for down here as well. So, I mean, it's got to be a bit fairer than, than the system you've got, I think. I, th I think you made your point very well, Paul. Um, Councillor McMillan. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, just a quick question, and it's on your submission under the drinking water meters, and that's number three. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know where you got this information from. And it says, it's well known water loss in Methven occurs in the streets due to ageing infrastructure. The Methven Community Board have records of when and where water leaks are, which the ADC could use at no cost. So I um, highlighted this and I spoke to Dan McLaughlin and he said all the Community Board records come from Council. So I was just wondering, is there an, does someone else have... Some records, or where did you no, get I, that information from? I saw their one of their annual, one of their monthly reports, and it had it was listing water leaks, water leak Cameron Street, report water leak Allen Street, and that's where I got that from. Oh, so that's yeah. a, um, that's a report that comes from council that comes to our okay to our community board. Right, yeah, right. so that's okay. Mm. Um, and I've got a second question, yes, if that's all right. So. I agree with you for the um, Mount Hunt Memorial Hall. I don't think that it should be um, paid by a targeted rate because there's a lot of people that use it. Um, d we had a suggestion um, today um, from Calvin Holmes saying that maybe some funding could be um, added to our general rate 
um, to pay for the IHUB staff sort of costing, etc. But do you think the hall should be paid entirely by the general rate, or how do you think it should be funded? I don't. I don't think there's any way that anything wrong with the way it's funded now. It was just that it was brought up at the ADC meeting that this was one of the reasons for our rate increase. Yeah. Um, I think it's fine the way it is, but I don't see how it can be used to, to justify the fourteen eight eight percent because it's it's been a targeted rate or whatever you want to call it for quite a few years now. So it's nothing new, is it? No, I think just the way it's been funded mm -hmm. has changed after the revenue and finance mm -hmm. policy went through. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Could I just ask <coughs> councillors that there is opportunity to ask questions? We, we're yeah. certainly not here to debate issues and get other opinions and bat it backwards and forwards. The questions are for clarity. Mayor Brown. Thanks, um, thanks Paul. On number six of the drinking water metres, you say in your submission that the metres only last for five or six years. The information we've got says 10 plus years. Mm. Where do you get your information from? My information came from somebody from the community board who had looked into it the last time they talked about <coughs> it. He's no longer on the community board now. Okay, I just wonder who's more reliable with information, but that's okay. Um, and the other one was around the wastewater joining the, um, the group. And um, is it eight percent of that rises for the joining the group? Um, and you understand that I know that. And when you joined the water um, group three years ago, I think it was whatever it was. Yes, you had a rate decrease that year. Mm. So you're happy with the de taking the decrease, but not with the increase. Oh, I, I, Methane's been fighting for water, as you probably know, for years for decent a decent holding tank a decent supply. The town's growing that fast that if you look at the population figures that the council have put forward, and I brought that up at the ADC meeting, they only project the, project the town to be 480 people more in the year 2048. Well, we already know there's 200 and something sections up there which are selling like hotcakes. So if you times it by the council's um, 2.5 people per house, that's 550 people. And I reckon we'll have that in, in what, two years, max? So, well, I get back to the question, you can throw figures whatever you like at me, mm. whether we've had decreases or increases. The crux of the matter is, Mayor Brown, I think we've been stalled for a long, long time. Our water's been, we've been on odd days, even days, we've been on restrictions, and I know everyone else has too, but we've been the first to be on them, and we've been the closest to the water. It just seemed to me totally irrelevant and totally stupid that we, we were getting cut. And... The tank up there, I came down 12 months ago to see um, two, two people, I think it was uh, the water guy, Mr Guthrie, is it? And uh, another <coughs> bloke who I can't remember the name. They told me the tank was earthquake prone, they could only fill it to 80%, and it was 800,000 litres, I think, was the capacity, so, but they could only fill it to 70 or 80%. So we're already we're, we're already on restrictions before we started. So we're only playing catch up with everything now, in, in my view. And you know whether we're eight percent today, ten percent tomorrow, it doesn't alter the fact that we've waited so long for water, and it's virtually we've been told that we're getting something out of this out of the out of the planet. Well, I don't think we are. We're only getting the basics. Well, thank you, Paul. I, think oh, I do have a supplementary, yep. but you've never run out of water, have you? Uh, no, but if we'd have had a major quake tomorrow, we would have run out of water, wouldn't we? We'd have a well, ruptured tank with nothing. No. Your tank at the moment has gone out for tender, you know that. Mm -hmm. it's, and it'll be very installed very shortly. Yeah. There's a water membrane upgrade um, plant that was four and a half million, mm -hmm. which will be shared by everyone in the district yeah. um, under the same system as the wastewater will, would be shared if you had a major wastewater upgrade. So you're aware of that? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are spreading. Yeah, I, I know you're doing it, and I, yeah. I know it's in the plan, but it's taken a hell of a long time to do. And it's just the frustration that all of a sudden we've got a 14.88% rate increase proposed, and it's almost like we've given you this water. Well, we've waited a hell of a long time for it. But you've never run out of water. It's... No. <laughs> yeah. We're lucky we haven't run out of water. Thank, thank you, Paul. Uh, last question from Councillor Brown. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Paul, well, just the whole, you say there's a lot of views from out, out of, outside of Medford. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys charge for that? Uh, for weddings? Yeah, for they do. Yes, they do. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. So there should be some income coming out of that, or? There will be, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank um, you. I can assure you, you've made your point very, very well. And I don't think there's anybody in the room has any doubts about yeah. your point of view. So thank you for taking the time and come to present to us. And uh, as always, we'll deliberate and we'll get back to you. Great, right. thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'd like to ask... Um, Mr Murray Hawkes, who's the next on our list, and his submissions are on page 9 and 265. Murray, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman, and uh, thank you, councillors, Mr Mayor. Um, appreciate the opportunity to participate in this process. Uh, you will notice that there's a certain similarities between my submission and uh, that uh, presented by Paul. Um, I'll try not to be repetitive um, in, in this verbal submission. However, all of the points that are written down there are uh, assumed to have been presented and to have been read. I think uh, while it's still fresh on our minds, uh, I might uh, look at the uh, water supply um, element as the, the basis of my first uh, comment. Um, yes, indeed. The, uh, the methven water supply, uh, which is never run out, um, but is on restriction for half of the year, um, and where, although the tank was damaged more than 10 years ago, and we've been rated for the capital maintenance of the system for the last 10 years, no money has been spent on it in those 10 years. So the justification of a 28% rate increase over the next three years, which is what you're proposing, um, in order to fund those capital works when you've been pocketing the money for the last 10 years with no expenditure, is actually disingenuous. And that's being kind. So the, the drinking water, the, the, the water meters question has been uh, thrashed to death. Uh, the, the claim of 50% water loss, which the council uh, staff were making at the start of this consultation pro, uh, process, they've backed off publicly from that and are now talking about up to 50% in some circumstances based on modelling, but actually not able to present 50% uh, water, lo water loss from any um, supply system. Um, so uh, the, the justification for putting in metres is once again um, disingenuous. It is, is being put in place to satisfy a political agenda and not the agenda of this council, but a political agenda. I would submit that the, uh, uh, the district council should modify the plan to expand the Methven water supply to reduce unjustified summer water restrictions, to ensure adequate winter season supply for expanded visitor numbers expected with the hot pools, and to cater for current and future growth. We should not be looking for catch-up. We should be looking to plan for future growth, as Paul has already um, uh, noted. Under... Um, under the development and financial contributions for Methven new builds, um, Paul, um, Paul's submissions um, were uh, quite clear on that point. Um, I believe, we believe that the development contributions should be absolutely comprehensive and they should be pa paid by the developer and not by the rate payer of the purchaser of the section. It should be part of the, the purchase price of the section. Um, to the, the system that we have here where uh, uh, sections are, are sold for less than their actual cost um, advantages only real estate agents. It does not advantage the purchaser. They, and it certainly doesn't advantage the, 
existing ratepayers. The development contributions should be comprehensive and should be substantial. They should cover buying into all of the assets of the um, of of the district. Um, I'll move to wastewater and methane. This is the, obviously the the big ticket item. This is the th the thing that you're trying to frighten us with. And uh, at the meeting that we had in Methven uh, prior to the, the start of the consultation process, the mayor pointed out that wastewater costs in Methven have increased because of increased contractor costs and uh, and the uh, increased administrative costs uh, because of the way that you um, value the the system. I submit that you should reject the contractor's re request for increased um, <coughs> increased uh, charges for the uh, the maintenance of that system. And the major projects, the civil civic centre and the library, the community, our entire community, are confident that if carried out as planned, the costs will blow out and long-term funding, maintenance and oper operating cost blowouts will follow. <coughs> we can be confident of this because of the, camp the council's track record. And you only have to go into town at the moment and look at the increased expenditure that you've just approved in order to reduce the project management failure that is evident in the, the rebuild of the, the town streets. Everything you touch blows out. You might not have noticed it, but we have. Capital expenditure planning and budgeting. The long-term planning budgeting is based on a depreciation schedule for budgeting, maintenance, and operating costs. That's my understanding from your uh, documentation on your website. While, <coughs> while that's a, a reasonable basis to check, on your, your financing, it is not a basis that any business would use to actually plan expenditure. You plan your expenditure based on actuals, historicals and the like. Staffing and staff costs, you've got to get your staff numbers down. Critical point, all of the increased staffing that you are planning and that you have at the moment that is funded by government uh, grants, I, can, I submit that, that every one of those jobs needs to be uh, temporary so that we can wind it off the ratepayers bill when the government stops paying for those extra jobs. I understand about 10 or 12 last year and further plans. Thank you very much. Thank you, Murray. <coughs> Any questions, councillors? Okay. Uh, Mayor Brown. I should do one. Murray, you talked about every project we do has blowouts. Could you name them, please? Well, the Arts Centre is a... Um, the, uh, <coughs> the, the reconstruction of the, the roads. Um, you just approved an extra, what was it, 200000 to for, for night work. Um, that's extra work that's being done. So it's going to come in under budget. That the extra money is for extra work that's being done. I thought it was so that you could do it at night to avoid disruption. No, it was to um, extra work being done and also to have one street, one side of the street open at night, at during the day. Yeah. There's no right. night works or very little. So, yeah. so it's going to come in under budget? We've increased the budget because there's more work to do. Change of the budgets. But carry on with the other blowouts. Um, <coughs> The, the art centre is the one that you're famous for. I'm sure we're all aware of that. Thank you, Murray. Anything further? Any other questions of, of Murray? Well, look, thank you very much, Murray, for coming in. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Councillor Mackay, I can't see your light there. I should be looking. It's all right. You've Shift the water jug. You've got it in front of you, sir. Yeah. Old age and eyesight. Yeah, carry on, Councillor Mackay. Mr Hawke, um, you've been in project management, et cetera, et cetera, around the world. Um, if you were looking at Methvin and the 14% rate rise that this council's looking at, um, this, oh, if 
but as a draft, what would you do if you were sitting in my position? Uh, the 28% rate rise. Um, I would look to see what administrative costs I can take out before I took out operational costs. I would look at what my administrative overhead is. I would look at what my supervision overhead is on the projects that I was looking at, that I was working on. So overheads are the place that eat your budget. They're the things which create cost overruns because normally you can screw something out of the contractor, but you can't screw your own overheads back when, when there is an extension of time on a project. So that's where I, what I would be looking at. I'd be looking at your head office staffing and the cost allocation model that you have. Thank you, Murray. Anything further, councillors? Thank you very much, Murray, for coming in. The oh, sorry. Where's Just one question. Oh. Murray, Sorry, if, me, Brian. if you've been in the contracting game, what's a good percentage to have as a contingency on a project? Well, it depends on the project, um, but um, yeah, eight percent, and it and it depends on on where your sensitivities are. are they time sensitivities, or are they are they capital cost sensitivities? But you should be able to lock in your capital cost sensitivities early on. The other thing that you need to know is where your thresholds are. If your project is worth $50 million to you, then you better budget it at $42 million because it might cost more than 50. So you do not spend all your available value in your project. Otherwise, it'll eat your lunch. Those two figures just gave us 42 to 50 is more than 8% contingency, but happy with that. No, 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 I'm, I'm saying that you that you actually plan for less than your value. But, so those are two, those are two things. But the, the um, an 8% contingency should be able to carry you forward without any problem. However, effective project management, when effective, pro when project management is effective, you do not use that contingency. In fact, the contingency should be a, a, a plus or minus. And so if you went plus eight, minus four, your target should actually be minus four, and you should incentivize your project manager to achieve minus four. And what yeah. percentage would you have for um, project management and cons cons <coughs> consultants on a project? Total project management costs should not exceed 12% of the project. Setting. Now that's that's engineering costs and project management. That's all of you. Thank you. Because you want to do stuff. You don't actually want. You don't want documents in the in the fridge. You want stuff done. That's your job is to get stuff done. Please. Thank you, Murray. Thank you for your input. Right, we're moving on now. Uh, we've got a wee bit of time here. And next up is um, Murray Anderson. No, Sorry? No, I've jumped a page. So I do. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, Dame Linda Top. I do apologise. You're going to have to give way to the Dame, Murray. <laughs> Welcome, Linda. Please take your seat. Thank you. And page 574. The submission was sent in by Mr Shane Stockdall and mine may differ a little bit from his. I'd like to thank my two Methvin colleagues who were technically brilliant in their statements. I will try to be emotionally fantastic <laughs> because we're all speaking about the same issue the rate rise in methane. It's big compared to everybody else's, and so we felt that we should probably get a bigger percentage of submissions. And we are all talking about the same thing <coughs> because we were all very concerned about it. The whole of methane 
is concerned about this. Not just the three who represent Methvin here tonight and the other speaker who was here this afternoon, Trevor from the Blue Pub, who spoke on behalf of hospitality about the commercial rate rise. Thank okay. you. I'd like to bring to the Council's attention an article that was published in the Ashburton Courier dated June 2020, approximately 11 months ago. The headline reads, Ashburton Council sets 2.56% rate rise. Quoted by the Mayor, Council was committed to completing the Ashburton CBD revitalisation, the Ashburton River Crossing Wastewater Pipeline and Ashburton Water Supply and Wastewater Upgrades. The new Ashburton Library and Civic Centre, or Civic Building, I should say, would also be progressed. Preliminary work to start on the site next week. That was 11 months ago. What happened? Something bad happened since then. Because now we are at a 14.86% increase for methvin. What happened to the 2.56% 11 months ago that was published in the Courier? Not once in the Courier article was Methvin mentioned. His last quote in that, or he, one of his quotes in that there, the Mayor, Mr Neil Brown, was with the 2.56% rate rise, he said, spend it wisely, was the quote from Mayor Neil Brown to council staff. Mayor, I hope you can spend the proposed 14.86% that you have put on methane ratepayers, that you can spend that wisely as well. You may have heard me correctly. Yes, I said the proposed 14.86% rise in our rates in methane. Because this is not a done deal. You may believe this is a done deal, but this is just the starting point. It is the starting point. I can assure you that. Because Methvin is behind this in 100%. That they feel that it is totally, totally unfair that what is happening here is that Ashburton gets a, let me check, a 4.6% increase, and Methvin gets a 14.86. Okay. I am imploring this council to reconsider this absolutely unfair rate rise for Methvin. Okay. We are a small town in the Ashburton District Council. Yesterday, I had a pretty cool phone call with one of your policy makers. About an hour and a half I was on the phone. And he assured me that Methvin will not receive anything of any importance this coming year. Because I asked him, why were we being charged $449 extra for the wastewater? And he said, it is a funding policy, not a wastewater policy. It's a funding policy, is what I was told by your policy makers yesterday afternoon. Okay? 
What's a funding policy? It means let's rob Peter so we can rob Paul as well. Funding policies just move things around. It's a way of telling ratepayers that there is something happening, yes, but it's not actually going to happen for us. It's going to happen for Ashburton. Because the other question that I asked your policy maker was, and this is a beautiful moment here, saying that the Memorial Hall was an extra cost to us now. The Methpin Community Charge UAC and the swimming pool is an extra cost to Methpin. And the largest cost to Methpin will be wastewater at $449 per rateable house in Methpin. And I said, what do we get for our $449? And he told me, operational and maintenance. And I believe that we already have that at our wastewater plant. We already have that. Maintenance and operation. But we have to pay an extra $449 per household for it. And then I said, what about Ashburton? They're only paying 4.65 sorry, for their rate increase. Are they getting an upgrade to their wastewater? And the policymaker from the Asperton Council quoted me this statement. I would rather not say because it could confuse matters. Now I believe your primary policymaker is here. Is Ashburton Council going to fund a new wastewater system for Ashburton? Does anybody know that? Are you upgrading the system in Ashburton? A yes or a no would be simple. Not, I'd rather not say, because it could confuse matters. Do we have anybody in this council or any policy makers who can say yes or no what is happening? Linda, I'm going to ask you to just come to the summary of your submission. I think you've made your point. This very, is my very... summary. We do not get answers from you when we ask for them. There is not enough transparency in this council. We want you to answer our questions. Where is the money going? What are we getting for the increase? And right now, we're getting nothing. We are not Ashburton's cash cow. That, right now, I can tell you, is bullshit. Well, thank you, Linda. I'm not finished, sir. You do have a time limit, but I'd ask I you to come to... I haven't finished my time. I haven't finished my time. I will finish very shortly. That would be fine, thank you. But I other, need, we people. need some answers. We need some answers, okay? Will the council commit to a change in the 14.86%? We know that rates have to be paid and rates need to make things go forward, okay? But to ask a small town in a district to pay 10% more than anybody else in the second year of COVID, a tourist town that re relies on tourism and relies on the weather for their income, you are asking us a big, big asked for getting nothing back. Are you prepared to smooth this rate rise? We're saying, do not charge us 10% more. 
we do not want to pay fourteen dollars fourteen point eight six percent earlier on trevor from the blue pub asked you a question a simple question how much would a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar rateable property pay how what would their rate increase be okay and you could not tell him you could not tell him not one person here could tell him. i can tell you the answer right now if you'd like if you'd like to go on to your official website on page three of six under methvin rates two hundred thousand dollar property in methvin will pay 15.2 percent increase it's on your website but you could not tell him and so that's what I'm asking of this council give us the answers that we are asking for and if you want more money from us then give us something back I can assure you Linda that your points have been well made and they have been recorded and as with all other submitters would they will be considered and deliberated upon and we will be getting back to you as any of the councillors got any questions Mr. Mayor yes, Brown just one you talk about the wastewater dollars charge 449 in methane and Ashburton pays 449 per year as well you understand that I understand that as well, yes, but Ashburton gets something for their money. Where does your wastewater go then? Where does it go? Our wastewater is, goes to our wastewater system in Metha. It doesn't come all the way down to Ashburton, does it? No. no, no. Uh, where does Ashburton's wastewater go? In Ashburton. All right, there's two separate systems, isn't there? Correct. Yeah. We both pay exactly the same amount of money. You get upgrade. We get nothing. Do you need an upgrade on your wastewater system? Do we? That might be a question for you, Mia. Do we need an upgrade on our sewage system? I'm saying at the moment, no, but in the future. Okay, if you you're will. saying no, why are we paying $449 for nothing? You have a maintenance and operations budget there to transfer your wastewater from where your house is to the disposal point. It doesn't happen for nothing. No, we, we know it doesn't happen for nothing. Amos Ashburton's doesn't happen for nothing. Nothing happens for nothing. We Correct. all know that we have to pay our rates. Ladies and gentlemen. We're just I'm, saying this is too much I'm, for I'm, a small town. Understood. That gets nothing back. I'm, I'm going to call a uh, an end to this uh, submission. Thank you, Linda. You've made your point very, very clear. And rest assured, as we say to all other submitters, all your points will be uh, considered and reviewed, and we will report back to you. Thank so you. For thank you very on. much for coming in. Thank you. So now I'll call upon Murray Anderson. Uh, and he's on page page 16 through to 20. And um, 10 minutes, Murray. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, uh, We're running away yeah, thank you line. for the opportunity. This time I've not got any, uh, any, any further notes, and uh, I'll try and keep it brief. And uh, you may have some questions, that's all. The uh, water reforms, page 12, uh, these are ongoing challenges. And uh, all I say to you is that uh, remember we're in a, a system at the minute where central government is looking at centralising many of our services. We've been through all this before, hospitals, etc. So just beware that you must keep some local control on these issues. Second one, 17, uh, drinking water. Uh, once again, pretty uh, uh, clear on the matter. The uh, uh, Remembering much of the town the centre of the town is already on water meters and I notice uh, leaks 
coming out of the business area or on the footpath, do you monitor this? Is this quite simple, uh, even though you drive past and see these leaks going on? So uh, I'm sure that you'll, you'll consider these issues. I don't want to see what happened in Christchurch City 20 years ago, and then they, kept, they implemented all the metres, and then the council changed the policy, and it's only recently uh, that uh, those metres have come into use, and uh, they do wear out. Uh, elderly housing, page 20. Uh, yes, I certainly support it, and uh, but because it's an important function in my view, I, I'd hope that we would have increased it. You're getting into other social issues, uh, but this is one you You've got to run a business. Seafield uh, Road uh, entrance. Yeah. Uh, once again, pretty, uh, ex uh, pretty uh, clear. Uh, on, on what I'm trying to say to you. Uh, I must say that uh, I was disappointed with that eroding development. I managed to stop it when I was in the system and I can tell you that uh, I got on site and the engineer said yes, in the future it will need to go but in the meantime we cannot have a 100k speed limit and suddenly down to 50. All you had to do was move the bloody, f I mean, move the sign forward a bit, which has since happened. So anyway, you'll, you'll work on that. Uh, can I just, uh, I've run out of, run out of time. I, uh, I'm not technology, unfortunately. But you, you did. You I did both. <laughs> I did notice the mayor this afternoon take five minutes before she started to set up her technology. Uh, what's in a name? Uh, I believe it is important a name, and uh, I'm a great uh, Ashburton district through and through. And before this uh, town developed as a town, we had the Ashburton River. It was named first, and it's always been there. The centre of our district runs through the middle of it. The county, Ashburton County Council. So, so it's pretty... Uh, I, I hope that you'll take consideration of that because I do feel strong uh, that Mid-Canterbury is also our district. They can both be used, but uh, always dominate. Show the flag on Ashburton, Ashburton District. And I, I've made some comments there. Uh, EA Network Centre. I do get people say to me still, uh, did they build it? You know, this was an Ashburton district. It was a community. The community put six million into this in fundraising. And yet the EA comes along and, and, uh, and uh, gets naming rights. You know, that's all. But uh, on that matter... You're talking about the district's name and promotion and all this, which is good. Uh, I don't, I, I'm pleased if you re-look at the name, but uh, don't do what Christchurch did, spend two, turn a quarter of a million on uh, sorting out a name for Cup Week, uh, sh Cup Week, Show Week, Bloom. You know. Uh, so, once again... You may consider that or not. Uh, yeah, just while you're discussing the future names and uh, the district promotion, uh, I remember Electricity Ashburton when it was Ashburton Electricity and they asked the peoples of this town for a name, come up with a good name. Well, it, it was all right. They changed the word around. Electricity Ashburton instead of Ashburton. Forestry and uh, I... Haven't got time in this presentation to go into details on that, but uh, and I'd be happy to have some input because I, we tried uh, on the uh, the rules of that uh, design, uh, crown land. It can be done. 
Well, I see Mr. Bright there, who uh, uh, recently ten of just one example, ten million dollar loan for the shingle down the, down the way, the property. Uh, if we can handle this correctly, get rid of the the non-profitable forestry areas, transfer it into such as that, but that's down the track. Uh, perhaps one more here. Here we go. Yeah, you've got two minutes, Murray. Right. CBD continues to struggle, and it really worries me, this. The, uh, you know, we got rid of uh, the transport companies, etc., in the town, and now you're building up along the river there. Uh, it's, it's adding to transport problems. Mr. Chairman, and it will, it will continue to get worse. It'll be a nightmare of this transport. It's only one way. Anyway, and the town is struggling. It's, you know, have you got plans for the future development of the very centre? It's sitting there. I assume Council's got a third, got a stake, a, a considerable stake in this. Have you got plans laid out for what sort of business you're going to have there. We've got to get the people into the, the centre of this town. Not... We'll move on to something else. Uh, the road, uh, uh, race course road subdivisions. Uh, once again, a serious matter. And uh, I've had good discussions with your planning department. They're very aware and supportive. You know, have subdivisions you need quality subdivisions not a fragmented development mm. that will be hamstring things in this in, in the future and as you are well aware that the race course uh, the golf course is a very uh, it's a big business and a lot of transport mm. we've got to get that uh, link road through to race course road I must be just about finished. We won't talk about too much about rates. Uh, <laughs> uh, just uh, Mr. Brake will understand what I'm getting at there. And uh, what I'm really saying is it is a big business, as you're saying, but you are selling down and your debt's in dramatically increasing, 166 million in five years' time. Are you keeping up with... Uh, and developing further uh, streams of income that is desirable for your ratepayers and the well-being of this district. I'm sure we will be. And thank you, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Murray. If councillors got any questions, I, I've just got one. You mentioned Seafield Road entrance. What? I wasn't sure what you meant by that. <coughs> you, you're coming into the town. From the north, you say? Yeah. yeah. Or, no, more importantly, uh, you're coming down, I've referred to it here, Racecourse Road. And it's a principal road, and Seafield Road is a principal road. We used to be able to go straight across. That's what I was getting out oh, at the start. Right. Okay, I get you. So now, they've thanks. blocked it off. Yeah. You go down here, Mickey, 300 metres, round here. Yep. It's safety manage. it's traffic management. And safety problems. Yep. Simple as that. Thank Get you. Get it fixed, but I know it'll take a long time. That's but it's got to be done. That's clarified. It's, it's, it's growing all the time. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Murray. Appreciate you taking the time to come and speak to us. And, and uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I will not take as much time in the future. So, uh, <laughs> so you may be happy about it. Let's that. hope we both have a future, Murray. <laughs> uh, next on our list is um, IWY Trust, Mr. Colin Woolsey. Welcome, Colin. The, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening. Thank you. Um, have I been left to last, have I? No. <laughs> uh, we've got another one yet, so... All right. Um, so 
so, please okay, carry on. So, so the floor is mine. Um, yes, indeed. You'll have read my hastily prepared um, submission, and I guess I'm, I'm a Methan resident, um, have been for the last three years. Um, I guess the two points that I submitted on were primarily the water meters. Um, I, I don't see the leak detection um, uh, demand or need to uh, install global water meters throughout the town at a cost of five million dollars and a life expectancy of five years. Is that what I'm led to believe from yeah. the first Methan community meeting? Ten years. Plus. Ten years. Okay, so, so it's still a there's still a half million dollar per annum upkeep once they're fully installed. Um, um, I guess on, on the water um, issue, uh, I don't know whether um, the development contributions have been brought up by other submitters, but when we bought our section and built our new house, we paid council nearly $7,000 development contribution. Now, I was always led to believe that that was to fund growth in the network because of new development. So that money, in theory, held in trust for future growth, future expansion. Um, is that correct? Or is my assumption and interpretation of the website in error? I'll defer to Mayor. Uh, the $7,000 you pay is to join the club. Someone else has paid it previously, or council's held it there waiting for the people to join. So you've now joined, and you get the seven thousand dollar bill to join for water and wastewater. Um, That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So clarification: I'm in residential D, so there is no wastewater, and and we get a restricted water supply. And you'll be paying for um, like a new library building, the art centre, the EA network centre, a portion of that, which others have paid for, and we've held it in reserve. So you're paying to join the club, so to speak. Um, okay, so right, I'm confused then by the words that that council built its network and community assets with sufficient additional capacity to cater for future additional demand, and then um, ensures a fair share of costs of providing additional infrastructure to cater for new development. So, so my contribution is to pay for future development. No, we've already paid for it. You're the new person coming in. The others have paid for it or held it in reserve as in council. You have joined because, and then we give you the bill to join because all the others have already paid for it. Um, Makes sense. Right. Um, <coughs> it's still, still confusing um, because... If, if it's termed a development contribution, then I'm paying, in theory, I'm paying for the development, the extra demand that my property is going to draw on the network. You're using up the extra demand that others paid for. Yes, yes, I'm using up the extra demand so my funds then create a buffer for other demand. No. You repay Colin, what the council had. Put in reserve for Colin, you. We've, we've, we've got your question. We yeah, understand okay. where you're coming from, so w we will respond to all your questions. No, look, that's that's fine. I guess my, my other comment about the the water is that on my residential D rating assessment, I believe I pay the same as someone uh, in residential A, um, and, and my allocation is 1,200 litres of water a day, uh, but my my supply is restricted to 2,000 litres a day, so. I then have to fund infrastructure on my property, water tank and pressure pump, to um, give me an adequate water supply. So there's a bit of disparity, and, and if the water meters go ahead, um, then 10-year ten, ten strategy, um, is this council entertaining um, promoting water harvesting, collecting rainwater, reducing the demand on its um, network? Is that something councils considered? Not, not collectively. We haven't, but it could be something that's worthwhile. Now you've mentioned it, right? Um, because I've kept kept records on the on the eighteen months that we've been drawing council supply. I've barely drawn maybe five hundred litres of water a day because we yep. harvest our rainwater. Yep. 
So if, if water meters are rolled out and people pay for their actual usage rather than an allocation, yeah. council may find that its revenue decreases if there are other people like myself who aren't using their full allocation. So just that's that's a, maybe a downside or a fish hook that there are maybe a lot of properties not drawing their full allocation. Well, that's a possibility. Yeah. Right. Um, that's um, that was, I guess, the one other one other matter that I didn't make in the submission that <laughs> that there's a seems to be disparity between residential A and residential D. Um, we don't we don't contribute we don't pay for wastewater because we have septic system. You're not the only one who's brought that matter up, so rest assured we will review that and, and respond to you. Right. So the, the rest of my submission really just, just goes around the, the galloping costs of council's operations. Um, <coughs> uh, I've got an article here, Federated Farmers, 5% um, plus a year since 2011. CPI has been running at less than 2%. How, how have... You know, five percent increase has been justified for the last five or six years, and, and another fourteen point eight and eight point something. Um, you know, in the in the in the crystal ball going forward, how how have that been allowed to happen? Because you know, I, I kind of find that that's that, that's feeding off the ratepayer, who has got no option but to pay his rates to remain. Um, yeah, to, to, to remain a resident. I, 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 just because every other council has been running at 5 or 6 or 7% for the last number of years doesn't make it right for everybody. And, and that's, that's where I can't get my head around how the budgeting, perp or the budgeting system works within local authorities and your ability to just take what you need via rate increase from the ratepayers. And, and as I said in my submission, I manage my spending to match my income. I don't manage my income to cover my spending. And I think that's what council has been doing and has been allowed to do it possibly for too long. I like all other councils. I'm not saying Ashburton is any different when, when I read that article and it covers a raft of other territorial authorities. Um, it's, it's a growing trend and it concerns me. Mm -hmm. Because uh, soon I will be on a fixed income, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I won't have the ability. Um, you know, Jacinda won't give me five or six or eight percent uh, adjustment on my income every year. So um, I, I leave that one with you. Um, Thank you, Colin. I, I don't think there's anything else. I've made um, you know, points about um, elderly yes. housing, and I, I um, we do have them here. Yes, you have them there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I just think that maybe current tenants could be um, given an opportunity to see out their tenancy at, at um, just CPI adjusted rates and new tenants, maybe you start to get a bit more commercial and if you can't get commercial then sell the, sell the housing stock. It ne needs to be self-funding long term. Thank you Colin. Councillors got any questions? Councillor Mackay. Uh, thank you Mr Chairman. Colin, just on the housing one, were you aware or have you been informed in any shape or form that we had a meeting chaired by a councillor with the people in this housing stock uh, along with the oh, uh, course, work course, and income mm -hmm. and we talked through the options or councillor Brown did with those people and our staff and we pointed out to work and income and the people what was available for housing subsidy and all that sort of thing. And our understanding is that those people will be no worse off at the higher rent. Well, look, if, if, Were you if, aware of that? No, I'm not. I'm not. So if, if it's gone to that level and those tenants are getting the additional support from some other organisation, yep. the councillor organised it. Then, then that's a grand, a grand solution. So, um, yeah. thank you. Were you aware that um, members of Parliament over the years have laid into local government councils and told them the same story as you just said to us about the 5% increase? Yeah, 
every year, and then when they become government ministers, turn around and give us a lot more jobs, which we have to fund. Have you ever been made aware of that by the members of parliament who criticise local government councillors? Um, no, no, but, but I, I, I once upon a time did work for um, Hamilton City Council. Okay. And, and well aware that departmental heads' um, salaries were based on their budgets and the number of staff they employed. Now, going back a few years, but you know, I, I don't say that tarnishes my tarnishes my opinion. But it was not a, it, it was not a good look um, because there was no incentive. There was no incentive to live uh, frugally, or um, budgets had to be spent. Budgets couldn't be carried forward from one year to the yeah, next. That's right. Um, so if a job doesn't need doing, some, some other job was found to spend the money. And, and I found that hard to reconcile. Yeah. Just one last one. Um, were you aware at the end of each financial year we actually have carryovers at this council? So uh, you, no, don't, so you no. don't, don't have to spend within the 12 months. If the job's not done, we carry over to the next year and fund it. Were you aware of that? Uh, no. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mackay. Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Evening, Colin. Hello. Um, if you're new to this district, reasonably new, I think if we aim for rate of inflation, 1% or 2%, we wouldn't have a new art gallery museum, we wouldn't have a new sports stadium, a new pool, um, our drinking water is up to date, our sewerage is up to date. As a council, our debt is not high, but we would be hamstrung if we were on 1% or 2%, we could maintain our infrastructure barely, but this district would not have any of these other facilities. And this is what ratepayers demand of us. It's, we don't build, when we built the stadium, we had um, huge public support. Mm -hmm. So would you rather be in a district that had none of that infrastructure, or would you be prepared to pay a little bit more in your rates so that it had all those amenities there for you and your family to enjoy? Look, I'm, I'm not fully aware of how council funds its um, capital builds, and, and you know, be they borrowings or um, you know, low, low interest rate um, borrowings. Depreciation, when assets depreciate, where does the, is the depreciation used to fund redevelopment? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's a bit of a money go around, I, I believe, available to how that's represented in the books. But I, I take your point about the community assets. Um, library, um, look, I, I don't use the library, and I've maybe been to the, uh, the um, stadium uh, in my three years maybe half a dozen times because that's not, my, that's not the lifestyle that I have. I don't, don't have a family. I don't have a need to use that facility. Um, but I, I take your point about community assets, whether, whether it justifies you know, the extra 3% or 4% over and above the inflation rate or CPI rate, I, I can't comment. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Brown. Yeah, thanks, um, Colin. So where you came from, what were the rates you paid where you came from for your property? Um, Tauranga City, I think we paid less than 2000 a year. And what do you pay now? Probably close to three. Same services? Uh, no, no, we were on, uh, we were on sewage, town water, um, rubbish collection, yeah, all of those things. Um, so, we, we, and, and we have water, water by metre, so no, no water in our rates, water by metre, quarterly billing. I'd probably paid fifty to sixty dollars a quarter. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Bank. Any other questions, councillors? Well, thank you very much for your submission, Colin. Thank, thank right. you for coming in to do that. Thanks for listening. Now we've got one last one for the evening. Uh, James McKenzie is coming in virtually.
just while we're getting ready, councillors, uh, James's submission is on page 379. There he is. Can you hear us, James? I can indeed. Good evening. So we're all set to go. We can hear you. You can hear us. The floor is yours. Okay. Um, well, going from the briefing, I take it that my submission um, has been read by the councillors um, present, those present. Is that uh, correct? Yes. Do you need any more time just to revi review that before we go into it? Because I know you would have probably seen quite a few tonight already. No, rip into it, James. Okay, uh, so there's two points that I raised here. First one around water meters. Um, it was an interesting meeting that we had in Meth and Neil. Um, I don't know how long ago was that, six weeks, maybe a bit longer, eight weeks ago? Yep, yep. Yeah, um, so at the meeting in Meth and um, the water meters topic came up and the sort of argument for water meters was very much um, leaning towards uh, leak detection rather than long-term revenue opportunities for the council to charge for water usage. Um, although that was obviously cited as a possibility in a three years time frame. Um, uh, I guess the rationale for, uh, for water meters um, very much sort of aligns to pay as you go or pay as you use, uh, but not leak detection. So I just wanted to understand the rationale around using water meters uh, to reduce the leakage in the system and um, the reticulation system because uh, I do a lot of water leakage detection in our own reticulation system at Mount Hutt uh, with our snowmaking system and measuring what comes out at the end of the tap isn't the way to find leaks. And uh, that's certainly the experience we've had. So there's lots of other different ways of doing it. Yep. He's making a presentation. Yep. It's not a discussion. Yep. James, you just carry on with your presentation, if you would, please. This, this is not a debate or a discussion. You're making a submission to us. All right, sorry. Um, so that was my first point. So um, my uh, position there is that I think um, that the justification water meters um, based on leak detection is unfounded um, and there needs to be a really good, robust uh, discussion uh, around that um, if, um, if that's what the advice is that you've been received. So that would be my advice back to you. Second part of my submission is the 28% um, rate increase and over three years. Um, I've actually had the time in the meeting uh, whilst I've been sitting here waiting for you guys to get around to me to see where Methan sits uh, across all councils. Um, uh, well, the Methan rate increase sits relative to all councils in New Zealand. Um, there are three other councils that are proposing rate increases that are higher, um, South Wairapa, Hawke's Bay and Northland. Um, and um, so, you know, the methane increase is substantial relative to the, um, the number of councils that are looking at trying to cover their increasing costs. Um, the, um, the submission that I've made is to say, hey, it's unreasonable. 28% increase is not acceptable to a lot of people. It's a tough time, certainly in a, in a tourism town where we still haven't really um, seen um, the benefits of uh, overseas visitors returning yet. Uh, and it's still uncertain as to what the impact will be in the short term um, with the Trans-Tasman bubble. Um, therefore, um, you know, the opportunity or the options that I think have been explored to, um, to reduce that to an affordable level um, have um, need to be, well, further, they need to be further investigated. And my point here is that we don't have any choice about paying rates. If we don't pay them, we get into a lot of trouble. Any other business that was to put their prices up by the same amount, um, you know, the customer has a decision whether or not they want to buy that product. Um, but we don't have the choice, and um, you know this is um, this this increase does not seem to uh, reflect the affordability of um, of what ratepayers can afford. For me uh, personally, um, I'm looking at potentially a thousand dollar increase per annum uh, on rates. And um, again, that seems like an extraordinary amount um, based on the infrastructure proposals and plans that are in place uh, for Methan. Um, I'm specifically talking to some of those um, infrastructure, in ground infrastructure projects. My point here is that if they are the price that have been uh, presented in the uh, prospectus or whatever you want to call it that was sent out, 
then the, I believe that there should be other uh, funding avenues explored to uh, reduce the impact on the ratepayer. Thank you, James. Um, Councillors, do you have any questions? Councillor Mackay. Yes, Mr Chairman. Um, James, leak detection. Can you very quickly tell us how we find leaks without metres at the end of the pipe, please? Very quickly? Yeah. Um, so what we would do is we would uh, isolate all, um, all um, supplies, I guess, out of, um, out of the main line. Uh, charge up the main line uh, with isolation valves in place and see if there's a, 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 um, a drop in pressure um, and then incrementally um, open up the supplies to each of those, um, I guess, households that are on that with those households um, with this, with this um, water um, turned off. It's very systematic. It is, requires a bit of legwork, um, but really ultimately, um, you know, a, a water meter is just going to tell you whether or not the house is using water not whether or not or the home is using water, not whether or not there's a leak in between the main line and that house. So there needs to be a more systematic way of doing it. Thank you. And a lot of it could be done potentially without any uh, additional infrastructure. If you've got isolation valves in the network, and I'm not familiar here with the um, reticulation for methane or other areas, uh, obviously, um, but if there are a sufficient number of isolation points in the system, you could charge up and get everyone to switch off, and like they would do potentially with a power outage, um, and um, you know do notifications and so on to say, look, between this time and this time, there'll be no water to your to your, ha your house, um, and then um, you know work your way through the system and incrementally open up each of those um, households uh, supply uh, with their supplies turned off inside the house. So that would mean that unfortunately it's a bit of legwork, but people wouldn't be able to do washing. Um, dishes, all that sort of stuff, showers and so on. So there is quite a bit of coordination there. But you could um, isolate it to small groups and do them at a time. Thank you, uh, James. Any other questions of councillors? Well, thank you very much, James, for your submission. We will review all your comments, as we will with all the others, and we will report back to you after our deliberations. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, comes to the end of the first day of uh, hearing submissions. And thank you all for your attendance. And I just ask the councillors to remain behind after the public have left, just for a moment. Yes, you can close that now. Yeah.